Same thing, and he did that entire story without using the Jaws music, which is pretty creative. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. That wraps up the Channel 4 News at 5.30. I'm Susan Lichtman in Miami. And I'm Beverly White in Fort Lauderdale. Thanks for watching. Channel 4 News at 6 is next. Good night, Bev. Have a great weekend. Thanks. You too, Susan. Good night. Good evening. I'm Tom Randles. And I'm Kelly Craig. Coming up on the Channel 4 News at 6, remembering Ralph Rennick. South Florida mourns the man who brought us the news for 35 years. Sparks flying again. Outrage tonight over the treatment of five Haitian stowaways. A live report. And sinkholes are back. A Central Florida family loses its home. Channel 4 News at 6 is next. Watch our teamwork. Channel 4 News. From your 24-hour news source, this is Channel 4 News at 6. With Kelly Craig, Tom Randles, meteorologist Brian Norcross, weather, Tony Segreto, sports, and the Channel 4 News team. Good evening. A South Florida broadcasting legend, the man who anchored the news from this very studio for 35 years, is dead. Ralph Rennick died overnight at Cedars Medical Center after complications from hepatitis and liver failure. He was 62. Channel 4's Bob Mayer was hired by Ralph Rennick 22 years ago. He joins us with more on the man and his remarkable career. Remarkable? Sure. History making. Ralph Rennick anchored the news at one station longer than any other anchor in TV history, a record that will likely never be equaled. WTBJ Miami, South Florida's largest daily circulation. The Ralph Rennick Report. He was, for the better part of four decades, the man South Florida turned to for news. Now here's Ralph Rennick. Good evening, everybody. Ralph Rennick, serious, conservative, upstanding, no nonsense. Rennick was South Florida, but even more than that, Ralph Rennick was District Channel 4. 113 Republican election. The Miami-bound FEC passenger train, the Gulf Stream, is derailed at West Palm Beach this afternoon. He was just a kid, really, when he joined Florida's only television station back in 1949. But by July of 1950, the skinny kid was on the air, anchoring a nightly newscast before anyone knew what a TV anchor was supposed to be. Time left to say good night, and may the good news be yours. There were no rules to follow, so Rennick made the rules, and he set the standards, standards we still respect. He was definitely an institution. He was, uh, he was a beacon. Uh, he was the, uh, the target uh, for everyone. I think if you had a look at today's uh, television market in Miami, uh, that you would have to attribute the excellence of this market to Ralph Rennick. I think that's absolutely true. Um, Ralph was everybody's idol and ideal. And those of us who came into the business a few years behind him tried very hard to strive for the qualities that he had already established. In the beginning, there was no network, no tape, no graphics. Film of national events often got here so late, Rennick had to improvise. The, the pictures we had, we clipped out of newspapers and out of magazines and stuff like that. And we had nothing. I mean, he used to go out and shoot Film. Ralph wasn't afraid to do things different, and he wasn't afraid to try things. No, he wasn't. Being number one just wasn't enough. In 1957, Rennick instituted the country's first daily television editorials. As I stated at the outset of this nightly editorial on September 2nd, no endorsement would be given any candidate for political office. Off the air, Ralph Rennick was a tough taskmaster, demanding much from those around him. But he drove himself too, especially in the early years, becoming the first local anchor to leave the anchor desk and travel the world to gather news. Do you think it would be possible for you to soon uh, visit Miami, Dr. Castro? Well, I am very happy for that invitation. In 1959, he spent three weeks in the Soviet Union, snaring Nikita Khrushchev for an exclusive interview. And now... Ralph Rennick reports the news. And talk about chances. Orson Welles had nothing on Ralph. In this 1960 program, Rennick simulated what his newscast might be like if South Florida were taken over by communists. People's Army militiamen stood majestically on the steps of the Dade County Courthouse where the new regime will make its headquarters. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the truth. We've been taken over by a totalitarian... At six feet four, Ralph Rennick was an imposing physical being. His mere presence could be intimidating. He was very impressive, and he was scary. You know, you talk to Ralph, and you say, Hi, Ralph, you go, oh, how are you? You know, and you kind of shake all over. <laughs> he could be very aloof. 
1%. Could be, would be. But get Ralph Rennick out of the station and he was the funniest, friendliest, wittiest guy in the world. A guy who could laugh at himself. Over the course of his career, Ralph interviewed seven United States presidents. It was never totally clear who was granting whom an audience. <laughs> The man who rarely smiled on the air smiled a lot in the community, and he was everywhere. An active leader in the Boy Scouts of America, with the Catholic Church, heading a committee to restore the Statue of Liberty, another committee to honor the Challenger astronauts, reading to the blind on radio. Ralph Rennick was in demand as a public speaker, as a master of ceremonies, as a teacher. There we go, the story's beginning, you better hurry up. Okay, can you sit over here? But he was also in demand as a father, having raised six children after the death of his wife, Bain, in 1964. His kids, and later their kids, appeared on the air with Ralph every year at Christmas time. The votes were invalidated because two punches had been made on the voting card. As a TV news anchor, Ralph Rennick was number one in the ratings for almost all of his 35-plus years on the air. That didn't hurt his job security one bit, but neither did the fact that Channel 4's owner, Wometco President Mitchell Wolfson, thought of Rennick as his son and gave him virtual free reign in building the Channel 4 News Department. Rennick's success was also due in no small part to this woman, for 30 years Rennick's right hand. If Ralph Rennick built the News Department, Ruth Sperling ran it. For Rennick, Camelot began to crumble in 1983 with the death of Mitchell Wolfson. When Wometco and Channel 4 were sold to an investment firm in 1984, the handwriting was on the wall. Rennick, whose brothers Bob and Richard have always been active politically, had for years harbored political ambition himself. He finally took the plunge. It is my decision, effective tonight, to step down as vice president and news director of WTVJ and also relinquish my duties as newscaster editorialist on this program. Rennick would begin an unsuccessful six-month run for the Democratic gubernatorial nomination, but not before an emotional farewell. I thank you for being the most supportive TV news audience anyone could ever hope to have. And then it was time to say goodbye. Weaver, you're the only one left here. What's, what's I'm happening? Gonna miss, I'm going to miss you. Yeah. <laughs> I really am. You have nobody to bounce your jokes off of. Yeah. Right? Not going to be the same anymore. And it wasn't, of course. Rennick returned to television in 1988 to do editorials for Channel 6, but by September of 1990, he'd had enough. Well, J.D., this is not the farewell. It's more goodbye for now. But for Rennick, it was farewell. And for South Florida, it was the end of an era. Good night, and may the good news be yours, and hopefully mine. A legend is gone. Ralph was obsessed with the business, with television news up until the end. I visited him just uh, four weeks ago at Cedars, and uh, he had, was reading his New York Times and his Wall Street Journal and talking to me about TV news and where it was headed, and uh, it's, he was just obsessed with it. He loved it till the end. And he meant a lot to you, too. Oh, he did. I was, he really was... was the one person more responsible for uh, for my career than anyone else. He no will be missed. Absolutely. Bob, thank you. Well, during his career here at Channel 4, Ralph Rennick touched thousands of lives, made hundreds of friends. Today, Channel 4's Ed O'Dell talked with some of them. Voices from all corners of the community hailed the demise of Ralph Rennick as much more than the mere end of a man, but the passing of an era the death of an institution. And I remember watching him every night, and the good news was mine for a long time, and we'll miss him. Uh, he was a tremendous influence on two generations of Floridians. Uh, he helped shape our understanding of what television news was. Uh, he helped us develop a sense of community uh, in our state. Uh, he was a wonderful friend and professional journalist. I always said if you had to give someone that much celebrity and that much power and authority, you couldn't have found a better man because he used it well, he used it wisely, and he never ever abused it. Very good Christian, very good person. I know he attempted to run for governor, and I wish I supported him at that time. During 35 years of success on and off the television screen, Ralph Riddick did experience a few failures. For instance, amid the success of surviving death threats while instituting the first Spanish language newscast back in 1960, he failed at one dream. Ralph always wanted to speak Spanish. He never did. <laughs> he always said, buenos dias and buenas tardes. That's all. And I try my best.
He never envied anybody's money or position. He always felt he was a very lucky, lucky man to be, you know, where he was at the right time. He had a great ability to make people feel good about themselves, good about the community. I've seen him over the years at various chamber functions and political outings, and uh, he's been a big supporter of Miami and Dade County. Ralph Rennick is remembered by those shocked by his death in the words of the poet, a man for all seasons. In Miami, at Odell Channel 4 News. The heartwarming stories about Ralph Rennick seem endless, especially from those who work with him over the years. Tonight, another South Florida legend remembers Ralph Rennick, a man still familiar to many of you, Chuck Zink, better known around these parts as Skipper Chuck. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. You and Ralph were, were part of the original Wolfson family. How do you measure the impact and success of a man like Ralph Rennick? It's not easy in listening to uh, my, my peers, my colleagues of yesterday and yesteryear, but they sort of summed it up very well. I have two warm memories of Ralph. One of them, uh, back in the early years when I was chosen as a co-host with Ralph Rennick to do the King Orange Parade. And I'll never forget, we, we really didn't get together before the parade. We, we joined Ruth Sperling up in the booth and the parade was coming down the boulevard and Ralph says, okay, I guess it's time to go. Now your name is, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I thought, he doesn't even know my name. But we, uh, we had a pretty good parade and uh, we had a good time together. Then the other memory that I have of Ralph, of course, is the day that the Skipper Chuck show went off the air and Ralph uh, devoted his editorial that evening to uh, my leaving the air as a, a children's host. And of all the things that had been written and said and reported, uh, I think those were the warmest and nicest words that I'll never forget. As Chuck, it has been said, he had a great sense of humor, but he was quite a guy. Well, Chuck, Ralph took his uh, job very seriously. Is there another side of him that South Floridians didn't always get to see? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think those who knew Ralph a little bit, and I wasn't close to him, but professionally, I saw him practically every day. He had a fantastic sense of humor. He had a dry wit about him. He was a great, great uh, master of ceremonies, an after-dinner speaker and he could really, really break you up. Hard to believe if you uh, only will remember the persona that you have been watching here of being on the air and delivering the news. The guy had a great sense of humor and a great joke teller. Finally, how do you hope Ralph Rennick will be remembered? As a pioneer, Tom, because you know, when we think of Walter Cronkite, we think of a network news anchor of the best of all. And I hope that they will always remember that Ralph Rennick was an innovator, a pioneer who truly set the standard for what ultimately anything that is done in TV news uh, will be or has been done. He, he was a true pioneer, and uh, the rest will follow. All right. Thanks, Chuck Zank, for joining us Thank tonight. You. Kelly? Family and friends gathering this weekend to pay their last respects. Viewing is set for this Sunday night at 7 at St. Mary's Cathedral. Mass and funeral services will be held on Monday at 10 a.m. In lieu of flowers, the family is asking for donations at the University of Miami School of Medicine Center for Liver Diseases, also at the University of Miami School of Communication. You can hear from the news veterans' closest friends and colleagues tonight on Channel 4. A special tribute. We'll take a look back at his career that spanned more than four decades. His influence and contributions to the community. Remembering Ralph Rennick tonight at 7 on Channel 4. Hi, Jack Bradford for Ocean Cadillac on Miami Beach. Want to put a little luxury into your life? Look what I have for you. 1991 General Motors program cars, the new car alternative. Here's a 1991 Cadillac Brougham, fully equipped, including leather interior, for only $22,200. That's right, only at Ocean Cadillac on Miami Beach. A 1991 Brougham for only $22,200. Take 125th Street, east to the ocean. We're open seven days. Larry Zonka, three straight Super Bowls. After that, he went to sea sports personalities as well as our own team of sports instructors help host Norwegian Cruise Line cruises. No other cruise line has such an all-star lineup. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus, contact with someone like number 39, Larry Zonka.
say you could lease a brand new sedan DeVille with no down payment, that'd be pretty smart, wouldn't it? With a low monthly payment, like $4.69 if you're smart enough to sign up before July 31st, no down payment, $4.69 a month, special factory to dealer incentives make this possible. That'd be just about the smartest way to get a brand new Cadillac you could think of, wouldn't it? I thought so. See your participating Florida Cadillac dealer by July 31st. There's an easy way to find America's number one ready-to-serve orange juice. Simply ask those others to kindly get up and leave the room. And you'd only be left with one. America's number one Tropicana Pure Premium. You see, no other major brand comes closer to this than Pure Premium. Because it's made with no water added and none taken away. So you can forget about those others. After all, you just can't pick a better juice than Pure Premium. It's Burdine's 15-hour sale. 50% off. Oh, Burdine's. All stores close Friday at 5. To get ready. Friday night, 6 to 10. Saturday, starting 9 a.m. at Burdine's. Lucky you. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. More anger and lots of resistance tonight from Haitians scheduled to be sent back to their homeland after coming to South Florida earlier this week. Channel 4's Katrina Daniel has the story. Well, Kelly, here at the Haitian consulate, they have just narrowly avoided another major disaster. Those five Haitians who've had a terrible wait, which included being chained aboard that Honduran freighter, fought desperately to keep from being sent back to Haiti. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The youngest of the ill-fated crew, the 16-year-old Alfred Ismay, clung desperately to the tailpipe of a car. Meanwhile, this man, Theodore Frank, who is also one of the five, he says he sold his taxi cab back in Haiti to pay for his way here. I left, I left one, one, one baby, one, my, my, my man, one man, six years, and I, I left my mother. I have one sister. I, have, I, I left three, three brothers. I have to help all of them. And that is why you came here? Yeah to get a better life like, so I can help them. And right now they're taking you where? I don't know where it's like, they won't take me back to Haiti. I don't want to go back to Haiti. But it looks like that's exactly where they'll be going. During that scuffle, one of the officials from INS dropped a piece of paper. I picked it up. It was the deportation documents. They are no longer here at the Haitian consulate. We're not quite sure where they are. We've been told perhaps one of them has been taken to Chrome. Kelly? So there's no recourse for them at all. They've exhausted all of that, Katrina. They're definitely going back. The Haitian consulate was out here just a few moments ago, and they're talking about perhaps a 10-day delay that they can review their cases. These people have a special concern in that they say they paid about $1,000 a piece to come here, so they don't consider themselves stowaways. All right, Katrina, thanks very much. Tom? Broward police call it a Palestinian version of the Mafia and put two of its members behind bars while handing over two others to the Immigration Service today. Police say these men were using a Fort Lauderdale motel room to connect telephone calls between Arabs in Israel and other Arab countries but weren't pairing their huge American phone bills. Detectives tell us they owe Southern Bell as much as $200,000 but are only a small part of a group operating similar scams in at least four states. New developments tonight in a string of fires at Miami International Airport. Officials now saying a fire bug is on the loose. Six fires reported at the airport in the last month. Just last night, a fire at Pan Am forcing the airport to shut down. Police say the suspect has knowledge of the terminal and may be a disgruntled employee working at the airport. Well, this is some incredible video you really have to see. A giant sinkhole literally gobbling up a house in Central Florida. It all happened yesterday in Frostproof in Polk County when a sinkhole devoured a $150,000 home and nearly trapped an elderly woman inside. The home is completely destroyed and a nearby home may soon be consumed. Fortunately, nobody was injured in the freak occurrence. Let's hope they have insurance that will cover that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, don't go away. Up next, Brian has the weather word for your weekend. And get ready for some toe tapping fun, a South Florida visit from soul singer Ray Charles when Channel 4 News at 6 continues. And in sports, the Dolphins sign two more draft picks and Robbie Stadium gets ready to expand. Those stories more coming up on the Channel 4 News. This segment of Channel 4 News is sponsored by Great Western. How much is your checking account costing you? Did you ever add it up? They're charging you month after month. 
Well, now look what you get when you open a checking account at Great Western. It's free. You don't have to pay any charges for six months. Think of all the money you'll save. So give Great Western Bank a call. There's a branch near you that's giving away free checking. Is this a perfect day? Yeah! Is this a great day? Yeah! What are you waiting for? A new Toyota. Today's a day to get a great deal. Today's the perfect day to get a Toyota Camry. The car that's ranked one of the top ten models in initial quality. The car rated Best Buy by Consumers Digest. See your Toyota dealer now because special lease programs, big factory to dealer incentives, and option package savings up to $900. Make today a great day to deal. Yeah! Today's Quaker State is tested tough for maximum protection against friction and the heat and stress of today's engines. Now, win this Ram Tough 1991 Dodge Dakota from Quaker State and Monarch Dodge. Just guess how many bottles of Quaker State motor oil are in the bed of this tough trunk and you could win it. Register this Saturday from noon to 3 at McQuick's 5136 West Atlantic in Delray Beach. Or through August 16th at Monarch Dodge, 2000 North State Road 7 in Fort Lauderdale. Brought to you by Quaker State, one tough motor oil. WTBJ remembers South Florida's original television pioneer. Right now for King Oldsmobile, here's Lee Phelps. Creator of the television news editorial. Clearly a revolution is taking place in the South. The anchor man who dared to be different. Well now ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the truth. A leader in South Florida for over 40 years in the community with his family. He left us each night with one wish. Good night and may the good news be yours. Remembering Ralph Rennick, a Channel 4 News special tonight at 7. Listen to Tony Sports Updates every weekday morning on Magic 102.7. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. Ned Smith joins us with sports and uh, talking about the Dolphins camp again, huh? Yeah, everybody hoping that these players come in quickly and it doesn't look like it's going to happen that way. No news is bad news for the Dolphins' holdout situation. If you're keeping track at home, Jarvis Williams now owes $3,000 in fines. As his holdout hit gate day two, the team did sign two more draft picks, Chris Green and Michael Titley, leaving only Hill and third-rounder Aaron Craver unsigned. Now, Jarvis Williams is a mainstay of the Dolphins' defense, anchoring the safety position alongside Lewis Oliver. But, hey, he's not here, and here's one guy who may not be sad to see that. Third-year safety Stephon Moore, coming off an injury, has an opportunity to challenge for number one, and it's got him fired up. It just make me a uh, much aggressive player now. Uh, you know, I'm practicing with the number one group, and I'm getting a lot of repetition. And coming off the injury season, and I'm gonna be hungry. And uh, you know, when Jarvis come in, we both gonna push each other for the position. Well, now that a baseball team is coming, the Dolphins announced they will go ahead with a number of changes at Joe Robbie Stadium. New baseball clubhouses will be constructed along with all-weather batting practice facilities under the stadium, a new press box for baseball, new lighting, which will help those Dolphin night games too, and prices of new skybox and club seat contracts will increase because of the added baseball games. Yet another suspension of Major League Baseball this season. Atlanta outfielder Ron Gant got a one game and fine for bumping an umpire. Actress Marlene Maitland out in the crowd at Wrigley Field this afternoon. Astros get their signals crossed here. Mark Part Portugal bouncing one past catcher Craig Biggio. Chico Walker waltzes home for the Cubs' first run. Chicago adds a three spot in the second inning. Jose Viscano caps the rally off with a double. That scores the Hawk. Andre Dawson, the Cubs win at this final 5-2. Cubs rookie pitcher Frank Castillo had a no-hitter into the sixth inning. Midnight is certainly not struck yet for Cinderella story golfer Bruce Fleischer of Miami. A former club pro shot 67 today and leads the million-dollar New England Classic by three shots at the midway point. It really was 100 degrees in the shade at the U.S. Women's Open in Fort Worth. Fans, not people, real fans were set up alongside some greens they iced those greens down before today's second round and kept them watered during the round but the golf was anything but hot only one player under par pat bradley still leads by one shot at the tour de france john paul von poppel won today's seventh stage terry a marie remains in the first overall wouldn't we like to be doing this sometime this summer biking along in france eating that great food but you want to see one of the rewards for winning a 100 mile race like today's you get those smooches from those young mademoiselles American Greg Lamont is in fourth place. This just mm -hmm. came over, by the way. Evander Holyfield says if he beats Mike Tyson in his fight, he'll retire. Oh, come He on. wants to go out on top. He'll retire if he beats Mike Tyson. All right, we'll With that see. kind of dough, why not? 
30 million he'll mm. make on that fight. He'll be back. <laughs> Thanks, Ned. Well, you can't start your weekend without it. We're talking about the weekend weather word next on Channel 4. Plus time to tantalize your taste buds with a cultural smorgasbord. Channel 4 News at 6. We'll be right back. Plymouth Voyager, the only minivan with an airbag at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers now. to save things because I might need them. I keep these for pocket change. Toss in a little every night and it really adds up. Same thing happens at Winn-Dixie. You save a nickel or a dime on one thing, it's not much, but save it on just about everything and you come out of Winn-Dixie with a pocket full of savings every time you shop. That's a promise. So get one of these because you're going to need it. It is one of the most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the heat, and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Call now and get a hot deal on a Domino's Pepperoni Pizza Feast. Packed with pepperoni and loaded with cheese. Right now, get two delicious medium pepperoni pizza feasts for only $12.99. Or get one for just $8.99. Only at Domino's Pizza. Call now. The Europeans make fine luxury cars. We know. Lexus has acquired thousands of them in trades for our Lexus LS400. Check out the rate of exchange at your South Florida Lexus dealer. Channel 4's cultural calendar is being brought to you by your South Florida Lexus dealer. Lexus, a relentless pursuit of perfection. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. Planning another ho-hum weekend by the beach? Well, we've got something to spruce up your life in tonight's cultural calendar. Start your weekend with musical legend Ray Charles. The soul singer will pop by the bay with the Philharmonic Orchestra. The sensational show, Saturday on Key Biscayne. Tickets cost from $12 to $35. It's Kids Day at the East Asian Art Exhibit. The kids will wear themselves out at the Low Art Museum in Coral Gables. The children's pavilion lasts until 5 p.m. Saturday. Costs a dollar, and organizers say it's educational, but uh, don't tell the kids that. Well, for this one, you may want to leave the kids at home and pick out on culture. Brunch with the Arts gets underway Sunday. You can tantalize your taste buds and your eyeballs. You'll dig into eggs, seafood, and salads, then enjoy works by a huge selection of South Florida artists. That's Sunday at the Sheraton Royal Biscayne from 11 to 5.30. Your cost, $12 to $19. Time for weather. And Brian, I understand you're uh, driving a new vehicle, and now I know why, because your old car, which was only about a couple of months old, had a black leather interior, and you were tired of it sticking to your back in the heat, right? And this one is white. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Buy white cars in the summertime. I'll tell you, take a look outside right now. It is another steamy day. Not as hot as it has been in Fort Lauderdale, though. 92 degrees downtown. In Miami, at 104 is what it feels like with the humidity, 59%. Wind southwest at 5. That drags that heat from the Everglades in 
here and no rain here to cool us off. But we have some huge thunderstorms going on here. I'll show you on the radar in just a second. 90 at the airport now, 89 on the beach, but 74 up at West Palm with terrific thunderstorms up there. 88 at Kendall and 89 down at Key West. No report from Fort Lauderdale at 6 o'clock. was dying to know what they had uh, reached. Moderate molds and low pollen is the allergy report. Mixed weeds, the main offenders, a whole little variety of them causing trouble today. Okay, here's the Clearview radar now. Over here by Fort Myers, heavy storms, but look right down in here. This is right along the Broward County coastline.